Uh, yes, Patel, I can. Yeah, if you can face this side, your camera is here. Uh, yeah. Ravi, you there? Yes. Okay, I'm trying to share my screen. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, so we are live, we can go. Uh, we can start the uh, session. Uh, Marcus, there's a button near your face, below your face. There's a button which will be screen share option. Okay. Okay. Is there okay. is there, is there a browser specific? We are we are live now, Marcus. I need to start the session. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we start our next session now. It is uh, the topic is running a homegrown Southeast Asian exchange. And to deliver this presentation, we have an enterprising and dynamic speaker from Zipmax Exchange, Indonesia's next upcoming big exchange here. Uh, he is Mr. Marcus Lim. He's the CEO of Zipmax. Uh, a brief about him, Marcus is the co-founder and CEO of Zipmax. He oversees the entire global expansion and development of the exchange ecosystem. He was previously the founder and CEO of OneFlare, the Australia's fastest growing marketplace for local services. So I now call Mr. Marcus to start his presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Marcus. Great, thanks a lot Patel and uh, thank you for having me today. So uh, as, as Patel's kind of introduced, uh, my name is Marcus Lim. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Zipmax Asia and uh, we're a regional exchange uh, headquartered in Singapore and uh, we have uh, offices in, in, in Indonesia, in Jakarta, uh, in Australia, uh, in Thailand. Uh, so we're operating in, in multiple jurisdictions. Uh, we are the only exchange in Southeast Asia or Asia Pacific that is wholly owned, uh, that has uh, multiple exchanges in, in, in the countries that I mentioned. So uh, in Indonesia, currently we are regulated by Babapti and we are registered with them as a crypto trader uh, in Thailand, we have received our license uh, from the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission of Thailand. Uh, in Australia, we're regulated by the local authorities over there. And in Singapore, we're in the process of, uh, of being licensed by the Mon uh, Monetary Authority of Singapore, MAS. So um, the, the unique opportunity that we see here in Southeast Asia is that, um, you know, we're trying to provide digital assets uh, in this region. Uh, digital assets, meaning kind of cryptocurrencies, uh, which we're all kind of familiar with, Bitcoin, Ether, Litecoin, um, you know, all the way down to um, uh, digital uh, asset uh, asset back tokens. So one of the exciting things that we're looking to launch um, is um, a gold back token um, and kind of slowly kind of uh, evolving and moving towards kind of security back tokens. So security back tokens, we believe, would be kind of the next evolution of, you know, digital assets um, coming directly from, you know, cryptocurrency, which is Bitcoin, all the way to, to digital assets and, and uh, security token offerings. Um, so in terms of what we offer uh, in, in Indonesia uh, specifically is that uh, we allow, you know, our, our, our customers to be able to buy and sell uh, digital currencies at the moment. Um, and we have recently also partnered with uh, Rupiah Token to launch a stable token for the Indonesian Rupiah. Um, our platform is um, on uh, multiple instances. So we have web and then we have mobile, uh, both on Android and iOS. Um, so one of the, um, the, the core kind of competitive edges about uh, Zipmax is that uh, firstly provide the convenience for all our customers. Um, and we do this at scale for across all the different countries that we're in. So we have the mobile platform and then we'll put the web platform. Uh, secondly is that we provide um, the most amount of liquidity uh, in the in the tokens that we currently offer, uh, so customers are able to buy as little as you know, uh, call it you know ten thousand rupiah, uh, all the way to you know uh, two billion, three billion north of that uh, in in a single transaction. So th this is the type of transaction we're currently seeing on our platform. Uh, third is you know we are uh, you know we have a um, a partner uh, in the US called BitGo that that essentially customizes our, our digital assets. And we have, uh, you know, $100 million of insurance uh, that is um, catered for all our customers. So uh, this is obviously a huge pain point for exchanges around the world and also a huge concern for customers, which we have addressed, uh, which is to say that we use the best in class or best in breed for, um, for custody of digital assets. And then on top of that, we provide $100 million insurance for all the digital assets that we have uh, stored with BitGo. Uh, so that's on the security end. Uh, in terms of the investment opportunities, um, so we currently list, uh, you know, six uh, different tokens. Uh, we have um, the um, the vision of offer offering more uh, uh, different types of investment opportunities, so not just cryptocurrencies or, or digital currencies, 
but also digital assets um, and, and security tokens, uh, which I kind of mentioned at the start of this uh, um, conference. Um, in terms of product, uh, we're working on a number of really exciting products. Um, uh, but in, on the peripheral side, we have, you know, a loyalty program that's, you know, getting a lot of momentum and traction. Um, and we're looking to, to launch more uh, structured products. Um, we're, we're going to be working with a one of the largest exchanges in the world. Um, and we're going to be partnering with them and, and, and also with other kind of liquidity providers as well around the world to kind of provide unique kind of investment opportunities in Indonesia. So we're actually kind of really excited to, to, um, to be launching that hopefully this year, if not uh, next year. Um, so, you know, being a, a Southeast Asian exchange, you know, one of the other benefits that we have is we're, we're starting to see some cross-border transactions that are happening. So what I mean by that is, you know, customers in Indonesia are being able to tap into liquidity uh, in Australia or Thailand, for instance, that we're in um, and vice versa. Um, this is a unique position that we're, you know, we're in. Uh, unlike, you know, the local exchanges in Indonesia where, you know, liquidity is pretty much within the, you know, the, in, within the country, uh, you know, obviously in Thailand as well that we're in, uh, all the exchanges are pretty much local based. Uh, so we have a very kind of unique position here, uh, which is very attractive, you know, for a lot of global partners to be working with us. Uh, so we kind of bring in, you know, this kind of uh, strategic partnership, uh, you know, globally um, and then providing, you know, these sorts of opportunities in Indonesia itself. Um, in each of the countries that we're in, we, we have uh, strategic partners. Um, as you can probably see on our website, you know, in Thailand, uh, we've got the, you know, the vice minister um, as, a, as an advisor. In, in, in Indonesia, we're partnered with Alto, uh, which is 49% owned by BCA Bank, uh, and amongst other advisors. In Australia as well, we're, we're partnered with Or Capital and Decentralized Capital. Um, one of the mo more challenging things, uh, you know, being a, a regional exchange is uh, dealing with different regulators. Uh, although there are overlaps in terms of how we are regulated, uh, which I think the regulators amongst themselves, uh, you know, talk to each other from, you know, different countries, uh, you know, there are certain nuances that are different, uh, you know, in each country. And uh, I would say so far, uh, Thailand is the most progressed, uh, you know, in, in, in this region, in Southeast Asia. Uh, they were the first to come out with regulation regarding uh, digital asset exchanges um, and you know they were the first to issue out these licenses to um, exchanges that were grandfathered in in 2018. Um, in Indonesia uh, what we've seen with the regulatory landscape is um, uh, you know there has been a lot of um, kind of monumental changes in, in the way they regulated uh, you know in terms of you know paid up capital requirements um, and also kind of risk management compliance kind of requirements uh, I feel like the regulators have been quite proactive uh, in stepping up um, to, and, and really their responsibility is to pr pr protect the public interest uh, and also the, and to maintain public trust. And so, you know, our endeavor is really to be regulated, to comply with the authorities in, in each country uh, that we're in, uh, and also then to kind of in, in, in turn also build a trust with the customer uh, so they in turn would be able to, to deal with us more comfortably uh, so these are the things that we've been kind of working on over the last kind of 18 months. Um, and, you know, we have really kind of started our journey in Indonesia uh, last year in August, and we've just kind of seen very significant amount of traction in Indonesia. In fact, Indonesia is our current uh, biggest market. Um, as we kind of open up in, into other countries in Southeast Asia, um, I think there'll be, you know, very kind of interesting opportunities that are coming out of Thailand or even in Australia, which I, you know, as mentioned, can, we can kind of definitely expose to, to Indonesia. Uh, which I think is currently lacking. If we kind of look at the traditional market for Indonesia, uh, the, 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 the local securities market or the you know, retail investors are only kind of um, exposed to, to the local securities market. Um, you know, with the advent of, of you know, cryptocurrencies and blockchain, uh, is this whole idea is decentralized and it's global from day one, which is really fascinating. And I think uh, for a lot of the um, uh, retail investors, it's an exciting opportunity uh, what we have seen as well is, you know, that within the millennial class generation, um, there, you know, there's definitely a lot more interest uh, in a global investment opportunity as opposed to just a local one, which is within the within the country that they're in. And this is not just in Indonesia, but also in Thailand um, and, and other parts of Southeast Asia. So I think this is definitely going to be um, something that we're going to be working towards and we're going to be providing uh, for Indonesia. Um, 
On top of that, I think we're, we're going to continue to build our, our, um, our business in Indonesia, um, you know, to kind of cater for the institutional investors, which is uh, the current thematic at the moment, um, you know, which is everyone's kind of waiting for the next wave uh, of investors or, or uh, to, to come into this space. Uh, retail investors have, have obviously been the first uh, in the first wave. And I guess the next wave is, is definitely the institutional investors. Uh, we are trying to position ourselves, obviously, to um, you know build upon the platform that we already have uh, to cater for the institutional investors to come on board, uh, which I think will be really exciting and, and allow kind of institutional investors uh, like the pension funds in Indonesia, um, you know, or uh, uh, investment firms in Indonesia to be able to allocate their assets into alternative investments, uh, which we are currently classified as. So this will be really kind of interesting um, as as you know the as, as um, more kind of institutional investors around the world start to kind of allocate, um, you know, their funds towards uh, uh, digital assets, uh, I think this is where we can kind of really foster the growth of this uh, this industry. Um, and on top of that is, you know, uh, the, the wonderful developers and, and engineers around the world that are building upon, you know, the technology that um, the cryptocurrencies are on. Uh, I think this is uh, definitely uh, something to look towards. Uh, you know, for this year and also for next year. Uh, so I'd like to, to thank everyone uh, for their uh, attendance and their participation. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, uh, I'm happy to, to answer any questions. Um, I see there are some. Um, unfortunately, yeah, I tried to share the slides, but um, I can't screen share. Um, the function doesn't work on my, uh, um, uh, on my, um, uh, just want to intervene here, uh, but yeah. due, due to some issue, uh, Marcus was not able to share the presentation, but don't worry, we will uh, take his presentation, convert it into a PDF, and it will be shared to all the participants. So you will get the copy of the presentations of all speakers wherever available. Okay. Uh, Marcus, thank you very much for joining in. It was very nice to get a demographic and an idea of the exchanges in uh, Southeast Asia. As you rightly said, Thailand is uh, very progressive on this. And we hope that the whole Asian community and the, and the exchanges would uh, prosper in Asia as well. So thank you so much for your session. Uh, welcome to Block Jakarta. Okay. Excellent. Ladies, thank you very much. You're welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned. We will be now uh, converting you over to the next session. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.